For most of his adult life, Joe McMonigle was a professional soldier. Two brutal tours of Vietnam, U.S. Army Intelligence, a Legion of Merit award winner, a black and white world clearly defined and limited to his five senses. But in 1970, Joe claims that world was turned inside out. In a restaurant, Joe suddenly felt ill and staggered outside. This is the first time he's told his story on television. There was sort of a pop, and I found myself standing on a cobblestone road watching the, uh, the rain go through my hands and uh, looked up and saw my body sort of half in and half out of a doorway. I knew at that point that I was probably dead. Joe was rushed to a hospital where he arrived showing no signs of life. I felt as though I was falling backwards and was enveloped by a white light. So here you are, you've almost died, and then all these strange things start happening to you. What's going through your mind? It shattered all my concepts of reality. I started having spontaneous out-of-bodies. I'd lay down for a nap on the couch or something, and I'd just find myself suddenly out of my body somewhere else, totally. Joe also claims he started having other unexplainable experiences, like knowing what complete strangers were thinking. For eight years, he kept his extrasensory perceptions to himself. Unbeknownst to Joe, 3,000 miles across the country, this man, Dr. Edwin May, and a select group of investigative scientists were just beginning to study extrasensory perception, ESP. When I first got involved with this, I was very skeptical. I said, if this is real, it's critically important. After 20 years, I've come to the conclusion something interesting is going on. How do you study ESP in the lab? Well, scientists developed an experiment called remote viewing. The person being tested is placed in a closed room. A researcher then goes to an unknown location, and the subject is asked to use ESP to draw what that researcher is seeing. Over the past 20 years, Dr. May has conducted thousands of these remote viewing experiments. In 1978, he started testing Joe McMonigle, and Dr. May claims Joe has drawn scores of unknown sites, 50% of the time with remarkable and unexplainable success. In one of his best hits, uh, we had a person that was in the administration building at Lawrence Livermore Laboratory. And all Joe drew was the laboratory, a perfect plan view of what this laboratory looks like. The interesting thing is, Joe has never been to Livermore. And this person could have been hiding anywhere in the entire continental USA. We've looked in the laboratory to figure out what's special about Joe. We've looked medically, neurophysiologically, physically, behaviorally, in every way one can look at a human being. And the good news is, Joe is boringly normal like the rest of us. Well, what we are proposing is that there is a sixth, an additional sense, that is responsible for what Joe does in the laboratory and in the real world. Does Joe McMonagall actually have a sixth sense, a sense which cannot be explained? To test his abilities, we flew him here to Houston, a city to which he's never been. For Joe, it would be like finding a needle in a haystack. The needle, a random location. The haystack, the 5,436 square miles that make up Greater Houston. We hired a movie location scout who spent five days finding a wide variety of distinct target sites. I think all of them have dramatic Houston elements with very defined architectural styles. And, you know, one of the things that I did not want to do is repeat any common denominator. I did not want there to be uh, two archways. Um, I didn't want there to be two triangles in, in the visual. Following Dr. May's scientific protocol, the producers reduced the hundreds of possible sites down to four. A life-size treehouse on the George Ranch. A visually dramatic portion of the theme park Astro World. The Ship Channel at the Port of Houston Authority. And a famous local landmark, the Water Wall. Without Joe's knowledge, those locations were photographed and placed in numbered envelopes at our downtown headquarters. 
We hired Officer Bill Baker of the Houston Police Department to retain custody of those envelopes. With Joe McMonagle sequestered in a windowless, soundproof room, we placed the four numbered envelopes in an adjacent room. To choose our final location, Julie Wieson, a local marketing executive, was asked to roll the dice. So the number is two. So Officer Baker, why don't you take envelope number two? For the test, we selected Jessica Miller from the Houston Visitors Bureau to be what the scientists call the target person. Inside envelope number two was the photograph of the Houston Ship Channel. It would be Jessica's job to go to the target site and carefully observe every detail. In theory, through ESP, Joe might actually be able to see the location through Jessica's eyes. We would simultaneously record both Jessica and Joe. So while they drove, Joe began what he calls his cool-down period, similar to meditation, clearing his mind of all outside distractions. After 30 minutes, it was time for our test to begin. I had no knowledge of any of the locations. We have been uh, radioed that our crew and our target person are now on site. So I'm going to show you a picture. This is our target person. Have you ever seen her before? No, I've never seen her before. Describe for us the environment that she's in. For television purposes, we've condensed the 15-minute session. Remember, these are the four locations in the envelopes. But all Joe knows is that the location is anywhere in greater Houston. First impression I'm getting is kind of a, uh, I'm going to call it a river for lack of a better name. My sense is that it's both natural and man-made, so there's probably been something done to this river. Uh, it's been dredged, or, or sea walls, formal walls have been put up of some kind. I didn't know it, but within moments, with just a few strokes of his pen, Joe had eliminated not only our three other locations, but the infinite number of possible sites around Houston. Now the question became, how detailed could he get? Many vertical lines that are perpendicular one to the other, but the horizontal lines seem to have curves to them. And the actual target itself is uh, more up on an incline. Remember, at this moment, Joe is attempting to see what Jessica is seeing. No, she's looking up. So there's something tall at the target. Keeps looking up at it. I want to say there's like a, a bridge nearby. My sense is the bridge isn't meant for traffic, it's meant more for people. As you're going through this process, is this con confined just to visual? Some of it's visual, but some of it's also hearing or smells or taste or just sensations. Towards the end of Joe's session, a huge cargo ship docked right in the middle of our location, dramatically altering the target site. I'm just getting a lot of uh, metallic noise. There, there's something else down here as well. It's a very, very large object. I don't think it's a building. I don't know what that is. Uh, but this is a very large, very large object. Something tall behind the part of the entry. And then I get sort of a, almost a specifically designed platform. I get, a, I get a feeling like there's a black stripe down the center of it or something. This is about probably all I'm going to get on this target. It was now time to go to the target site. Remember, Joe's impressions included a bridge, a river improved by man, seawalls, a very large object, and lots of metallic noise. When we arrived, we met Jessica, and unbelievably, we saw what she saw, a bridge. A river improved by man, a very large object, and a barge used for dredging. This is scary. Take a look at that, and then take a look at the barge in the water yeah. and the shape of that. Which looks exactly like <laughs> that structure. Were you looking at that during during the, the I process? looked at that a lot because I, you know, looked all down in that direction, so I did this look at it crane. a lot. What really impresses me is is large object. Uh huh. And I'm and I'm looking looking at this ship, yeah. and I just I, I can't believe it because that's that's right on the nose. 
Now, in terms of the bridge, you said you thought it was more foot traffic than that yeah. automobile? Uh, that's obviously something that twisted the interpretation. Uh, generally speaking, about 80% of what I do say usually turns out to be right. correct. Uh, Are you pleased with the way this turned out? Yeah, I'm pleased. I think uh, out of all the places that we could have been around Houston, this is uh, very much fits the picture of the area. About 20% of what Joe does is as close to spectacular as I could possibly wish. Scientists don't like to use the term miracle very often, but this is as close to one as you can imagine. Coincidence, chance, or an extrasensory ability that exists in all of us. If you were skeptical, like I was, then perhaps what Joe McGonigal accomplished today opened all of our minds just a bit. Reporting from the Houston Ship Channel, I'm Bill Mackin.